i for homes TV presents Selling Your House Today with Kathy Nelson and Tracy Nelson. And now, Kathy and Tracy. Hello, and you're watching. Well, hello. <laughs> hello, and I'm Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Tracy, and we are a husband and wife real estate broker team with Windermere Real Estate in Kirkland, Washington. Yep, we changed. Uh, it happens. And I'm excited about it. Uh, so you're watching Selling Your House Today, a weekly webcast that happens every Friday at noon. Yeah, these, sh uh, focus these shows are focused on getting you the information that you need in order to sell your house with confidence in today's hot market. And today's topic is photograph to sell right uh, when you're a seller what is the most important thing you can do well it's to get potential buyers into your house and what better way to do that but with awesome beautiful photos you get photos everywhere today on your phone or your computer and the flyers they are the most important part of your marketing strategy so to help us with that today and help us learn about that we have with us Scott Hargis of Scott Hargis Photo in Oakland, California. Hello, Scott, and welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. Oh, it's an honor. Thank you. Yes, it is. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure thing. Um, I'm an interiors photographer. And as you said, I'm based in Oakland, California. Um, been doing this for about 10 years now. Uh, maybe 11, depends on when you count the starting point. Point, but um, not long, really, as, as, as those things go. And um, I got my start uh, in photography, shooting real estate. Um, I've done that all over the Bay Area and, and California, really, um, for many years now. And uh, you're in your office in, in um, the Bay Area, and it's gorgeous. The photos behind you, too, it's very nice. I've been very lucky. I've uh, got a chance to travel around the world a little bit. Um, Shoot some exotic stuff. So it's uh, yeah. How do you do that? How do you get to go around the world <laughs> and, and photograph? What's what leads and up to this? Starting with real estate. Uh, starting with real estate, yeah. and uh, uh, you know the thing about uh, shooting interiors is that there are so many different applications for that that we don't always think about. And um, as I was shooting real estate, I, I found myself being contacted by builders and interior designers and architects who had all had a part in uh, bringing these houses to their to their uh, finished state. And uh, so through those connections, I began working with those folks as well. Um, it goes on and on. I've, I've even done photographs for people who make electrical outlets and light switch plates. Um, they all need pictures of their stuff, beautiful settings. and uh, <laughs> Light switch plates? Well, and it's all <laughs> telling the story of the homes throughout, you know, like you said, the process of the builders and the interior designers. And I like that. That's nice. Yeah, one thing that's important for a photographer to know is is to understand the subject matter. You can't just walk into a house and start snapping. It's good to look in and uh, and kind of really assess it for what it is. And a really good interiors photographer will understand the architecture, understand the interior design, and get all of that into the photo. And in some cases, that's really important. I just got back from Santa Barbara where I was photographing a, uh, a case study house. So this is a mid-century modern. Um, that it's, it's not one of the original case studies, but it was built on the same plans. And any layperson might walk in and say, well, this is a really beautiful house. They might even know that it was a mid-century modern, but the buyers and the sellers of that particular house absolutely know that that was case study number 16. It's a famous house, it's a famous design. And if I hadn't known that, I wouldn't have known how to photograph it in a way that uh, expressed that so that all the potential buyers who really know their stuff with mid-centuries and will lay down top dollar for it, they'll recognize that from my photos. You wow. just captured the whole essence of that home in talking about how you did that. Uh, I mean, I'd buy that home just you talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's in Santa Barbara, yeah, our favorite Yeah, we're from Santa place. Barbara, yes. so <laughs> we're jealous that you went there. Yes. Oh, nice. And those houses there, too, are so gorgeous. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, in photographing a, in a home for sale, what are the top tips for an effective presentation? Well, I would say that the, the number one thing is to uh, not necessarily show everything. 
Um, one thing that I think a lot of people have a, uh, an impulse to do is to take a picture of absolutely everything in the house. And I mean all the way down to the broom closets and the, the hot water heaters. I don't think that's necessarily what people need to see. I think they need to see the money shots. And I'm a big believer that less is more. Um, oh, money shots. Typical three bedroom, two bath house, you know, you're kind of your, 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 your average home doesn't need 50 photographs. And in, indeed, I would argue that you run the risk of, of uh, letting people talk themselves out of it when you show them too much. The idea is to think like a marketer, think like someone who's doing advertising work, which is really what it is, and entice people and make them want to see more. Show them enough that they get a sense of what this place is and what it's about, that it's gonna appeal to them aesthetically, but don't give them too much. Don't give it all away. All right. The, that uh, is, yes. The first thing you want to do is get the buyers into the house so that they can see more of it and make themselves feel like they can live there. Absolutely. Well, there's a, we're going to sh show the picture of the kitchen here. Oh, yeah. One of our favorite pictures. Of course, I'm, I'm a wine lover, so the wine gets me right here. It's the photo of your, of a kitchen with a gorgeous sink. But the, I mean, and I, I like to cook, so it's all about this lifestyle this woman is having right there. And, and the cherries on the on yeah. the counter, they're they're spilled out of the the little bowl there, and on the counter, it just it tells, it gives you a feeling for what it might be like to live there. Yeah, all of that is very intentional, and I guess the things to pay attention to in that kitchen are that it's actually quite bare. You'll, you you don't see a blender, you don't see a, uh, I don't think there's a toaster oven in there. Mm. You're not seeing the things, the dish soap, uh, that we all have in our kitchen. So there's, there's actually a, a, a surreal aspect to it when you start itemizing what you're really looking at. We pulled everything out of there and then built back just a few items that are designed to pique your interest and make you a lifestyle. Like, yeah, this is a shishi place. That, that particular house is in Truckee, California, um, oh, really? very Lake Tahoe. It's a oh. resort area. Um, and so we wanted to evoke this, this sort of leisure sense in there. And we put a person in the picture, but you don't see her face. Um, we, we don't want her to become the photo. We want the kitchen to be the photo and just sort of hint that, yeah, yeah, someone lives here and they just are so great and they're so cool and they're so wonderful. And if you buy this place, well, then you're going to be just like that. <laughs> you know, people, um, there's sometimes somebody with those photos that um, you know real estate agents take sometimes there's a picture of an agent in the background you know taking oh, the like picture the, uh, like a reflection <laughs> <laughs> in a mirror or something <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's probably not the right thing yeah. to do is it? No. Not good. Uh, isn't there a reason why we don't put many um, people in the I, I thought this was great because my thing was put a lady next to a refrigerator all the time because it makes you want to go in, check out what's in a fr refrigerator, hang out in the kitchen. But with real estate, you can't really put people in the, the photos. Yeah, so there's um, very often the, uh, the MLSs have rules about this, I would say probably always, about not having people, uh, often they have rules about not having pets, which I think is interesting, um, in the photos. And so there's a, there's a constraint there. And of course the MLS is really, really important, but at least in my area, and I know this is true in many other like major metro markets, the real marketing for the house um, is often done elsewhere. And the MLS is the portal uh, through which people are gonna find their way in, but then there's gonna be a brochure, uh, there may be a, a dedicated property website, uh, there may be video, and all of these things exist outside the MLS, and you're free to then um, be a little bit more creative. Nice point. Thank you. Yes. Well, uh, photography today. It has probably been, been um, things changed based on social media, online marketing. What, how has it changed? How, how has it affected the way that you take pictures in order to sell houses? Well, things move a lot faster for sure. Um, I would say one interesting, one interesting thing about, um, and it's not necessarily just social media, but, um, but the fact that photos are being viewed online um, more than any other place. We don't really, print is really no longer the primary, uh, the primary thing. And that is that a picture has to look good as a thumbnail. People um, come to these photos first, usually, 
as a uh, as a uh, grid of, of thumbnails, um, and there may be a larger photo displayed above them, but you're seeing this little film strip on your screen all the time. And so, uh, in order to draw people in and make them want to look at those, they have to look good at a postage stamp size. And that's a very different consideration than when you're trying to make a picture that's maybe going to be three feet by four feet and have that look good. Our eyes see these things in a different way. So. Um, I'm not going to say I have all the answers, but there are many photographers, and I'm one of them, that think about how a picture is going to see, how it's going to uh, read when it's teeny tiny, because it has to be something that you want to click on it to see it bigger. And I'm one of those people that it's going to click. <laughs> click on all of them, but especially you yours. Like click on it if it's colorful and has one large shape that draws your eye in, rather than an extremely busy photo which at that size you can't recognize anything. There's got to be something that you can recognize even when it's tiny. Then you're going to click on. That's r yes, you're right, and that's so, lovely. Think about these things. Yes, um, we have this photo again. Um, oh, yeah, this photo back. right here. Uh, that's up. I just love it. We just showed some of your photos on your blog. And this one of um, the Modern Luxury by Holly Bender Interiors, it's just gorgeous. Can you yeah. tell a little bit about this photo? Sure. Um, you know, we, we did some scouting on this house uh, beforehand, which means that we walked around without a camera and just looked at it uh, for quite a while and thought about exactly how we wanted to present it. And this shot, you know, jumped right out at us. Um, and we knew it needed to be a twilight photo. The, the twilight shot is the one that's, that's got the most um, bang for your buck. Uh, you get a really, really rich, vivid color palette, which again speaks to an image that's going to appeal even when it's a tiny little thumbnail. That's going to jump right out at you. Um, very often, all of the things that you don't like about the, uh, the house or the surroundings are going to disappear. Um, there's actually, you can see it in that photo, but it's faded. Up behind the house, there's actually a big netting thing. These uh, people had a kid that was really into sports, and they had oh. built him like a, a miniature tennis court baseball uh, uh, hitting thing where he could hit baseballs. And so there's this huge netting that's designed to catch those balls before they break a window. It wasn't very attractive. I think there's a trampoline in there, too. So, but at twilight, that really fades into the background, and what you see are the things that we want you to see. Um, the windows glow instead of being black, which they are during the day. Those are all tinted windows. Um, you get to see the landscape lighting. Everything that you love about it is accentuated. Everything you don't like about it, uh, it is dimmed or, or so dark that you can't see it at all. So the twilight photo, I always tell my clients that the two kinds of houses that really benefit from these are the ones that are already truly beautiful, and then the ones that are kind of aesthetically challenged um, because they will look better under those conditions than they will at high noon. That sounds like so much fun to create something like that too. Yeah, you're probably it's, creating these things for at least a photo like this for luxury uh, uh, home sales rather than these normal home sales? It really depends on the client. Um, some of my real estate agents are very brand conscious. Uh, and so they will spend the money to get a photograph like that because they can't afford not to look their best on every single listing. They can't walk into the next listing presentation trying to sign somebody up um, and, and not show what they did on the previous house, even though it wasn't a, a multi-million dollar house. Oh, yeah. So yeah, that money those, shot. Yes. We do those across the spectrum of, uh, of listings, actually. Nice, yes. Well, how do we find a good real estate photographer, one that uh, you know knows these things that you're talking about? Well, uh, you can start obviously by Googling the phrase real estate photographer with your city next to it. That's, that's going to bring up a variety of websites. Um, there is actually a pretty comprehensive directory um, at a website called photographyforrealestate.net and uh, that's got a, a worldwide directory of real estate photographers. But in terms of choosing, when you've, when you've identified, say, five or six uh, photographers in your area that uh, you might want to work with, you're going to want to do one of, well, you're going to want to do two things. Look at their website. Look at the pictures that they have on their website and see if you like them. Um, there are different styles of photography. There are different techniques that, that yield different looks. Pick the one that appeals most to you. But then, remember that you're looking at this person's portfolio. 
which means that you're looking at their highlight reel. These are the best photographs that they have ever made in their entire lives over the course of maybe 10 years, like me. So the next thing you want to do is talk to this individual and ask them to send you links to say two or three listings that they have shot recently. Because it's one thing to see the highlight reel, but we kind of know what their current batting average is, right? So you can go out and see what they shot last week that maybe didn't make it into their portfolio because it wasn't good enough. And you know that's a good way to see what consistently, day after day after day, this person is delivering. And of course, all, all those photos are right out there on the MLS. You just have to know which house to get. Yeah. So ask them for some, it's like asking for references. Just ask them for two or three things that they've recently shot that are still active on the, uh, on the internet. And go look at those houses and see like them. Perfect. Yeah. Well, Good advice. How about uh, things like turnaround time and, and cost and contracts, yes. things like that? That Are there differences with different photographers? And how do you know which ones are the, is the right one? Right. Um, you know, you, you get what you pay for. So as far as cost goes, um, there are people that will come and shoot your house for 100 bucks. And you might see their reflection in the mirror. <laughs> you can see their reflection in the mirror. Hopefully not, but uh, you do absolutely get what you pay for. So of course, if you're just going to reach for the bottom shelf, uh, you're going to get bottom shelf photos. The the range in terms of fees is um, pretty broad, but I would say expect to pay something in the neighborhood of two fifty to three hundred and fifty dollars for a set of photos of a house. This is going to vary so much. If you are in Manhattan you're not going to find anybody for that price. <laughs> if you are in Anderson, Texas, which I think has a population of 32, you're going to get by for a lot less money. Uh, that's than a price. good point. Right. Yes. Anderson, uh, Texas. In terms of contracts, though, and turnaround time, uh, most photographers, I think, will deliver your photos to you either in 24 to 48 hours. Uh, it tends to be a pretty fast turnaround because of the nature of the industry. Um, one really important thing that I want to get out there is in terms of expectations with this, is the copyright. The photographer is going to own those photos and what you're going to get uh, for your money is a license to use the photos. It's very much the same way that, for example, uh, iTunes works. You don't own the song in the sense that you can't turn around and start selling it because Bruce Springsteen is going to get pretty upset with you about that. You have a license to play the song on your iPod as many times as you want. So photography works the same way and the photographer is going to be selling you a license to use those photos to sell your house. You can do what you need to do to get it sold. What they're going to draw the line at is, for example, if you had an interior designer that helped you with your house and that individual wants to use the pictures, they're going to have to buy their own bus ticket. They're going to have to pay the photographer their own licensing fee to use the pictures in their own way. And that's an important uh, thing that sometimes gets people in trouble because it doesn't get discussed up front. Yeah, uh, another hmm. great point. You're bringing up so many great points. I love it. Um, um. Yeah, I was going to say <laughs> <laughs> the part of the, the copyright. Now, are the real estate agents supposed to be saying that or do the photographers, when you're being interviewed, say that? Because I think I should say something, too. Yeah, I think a smart photographer brings that up right up front, and I think a smart photographer has their terms in writing. Not all of them do, um, I'll just say. Many many people are just working on a handshake and an understanding, but it's a good topic to bring up if you think that you're going to be doing things with these pictures beyond selling your house. Very nice. Very good point. Because, yeah, that's that's going to create an argument later if you're not clear about what's, what, the, what the disposition of the photos is. Yeah. Hmm, absolutely. Definitely. Well, what about video? Video is a marketing tool. How can you use video alongside the uh, photographs to really enhance the marketing um, marketing of your house? Yeah, this is getting more and more and more common. Um, one of the problems with video is that it's harder to find a platform to get it out there. You know, we have MLS systems all over the country that are designed for still photographs. That's very easy. Um, even your basic website can handle a photograph very easily. Video is a little extra step of, uh, of difficulty in terms of getting it out um, and presenting it to the world. Um, once you're there, though, it's a whole other world of creativity is open to you. Um, I would say that video is less effective at, quote unquote, showing the house um, in all of its detail, simply because houses are notoriously difficult subjects to, to capture. Um, as still photographers, we have all sorts of Photoshop techniques, lighting techniques that we can do to make them look really good. But video, you can't Photoshop, right? That's video is just the way it is. 
as a result, in my opinion, video is better used to show the lifestyle of the house, to show the people actually use that house and to sort of, it's the sizzle and not the steak, right? The video is the sizzle part of it. So the most effective videos that I see are not really put the camera on your shoulder and walk through the house and give everybody motion sickness, but more of a, of a produced short film. And, I and love there that. you may actually put some people in it. If there's a backyard that's with a playground, get a kid to swing on the swing set. Right? If there's a long, beautiful, curved driveway, get a shot of a, of a nice car zooming down the driveway and plant those seeds in people's minds that like, yeah, if I live there, I'm going to be just like those people. It's advertising work in a big way. And I think video is extremely good at doing that. Do you, uh, do, you do much video? I do very little video. Yeah. So I'm not, uh, I'm not a practitioner of this. You but do the behind the scenes. I do lots of behind the scenes videos, yeah. I dabble. I don't do video really professionally though. But there are plenty of people who do and do it incredibly well. Wow, yeah, I like seen, that idea. I've, we've seen some uh, uh, production style videos for some of the luxury homes and some of them can uh, actually get kind of racy. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, there are some again. You know, the creativity that you're that you're able to do is huge. And I would say that some of those that are really, I'm, I'm going to say beyond racy and say risque. Some of the stuff they do in Australia is outrageous. Huh. But they're smart. They get first of all a lot of publicity. Sometimes they push the boundaries quite a bit, and they get a lot of press. Um, as in, like, oh my gosh, can you believe what they did? Yeah. But they know exactly who their buyer is. When you're putting a house up for sale, you should have some sense of who's going to buy it. Are you selling, is your house something that's going to be attractive to a retiree um, whose kids have all moved out and they're worried about stairs? Or is this house something that's going to appeal to a 20 year old, uh, 20, 24 year old who's just out of college and is um, trying to attract a, a girlfriend? Like who, is it a first family kind of a house? Who's going to buy this house and then target the marketing to them? And that's where video can really do it. Those racy risque videos, yeah. I'm not going to buy that house. I'm not interested in it, but I'm not their demographic, and they know that. They know exactly who they're talking to. That they do. Do you think uh, video is just going to continue to grow on on uh, on uh, real estate? And absolutely, it will. Uh, I want to do those now. Yeah. <laughs> like there's, there's no question in my mind that it's going to grow. Video is the fastest growing thing on the internet. Um, yeah, there's there's no question that that's going to continue to grow. Huh. Nice. It's in its infancy when it comes to real estate, I think. I think it's going to pr proliferate. Nice. Well, that's what we hope. We, yeah. we, we kind of like doing video. Yeah, we like doing the videos. But uh, doing them in the house would be even better. So uh, we'll have to look into that. Um, Scott, before we go, uh, I want you to talk about uh, what you offer to, uh, it's up on the screen here, um, The got Essential a book? Guide. Yes. Oh, sure. Well, I've got a book and also a video series that both go into the techniques behind doing real estate photography. Um, you know, we've been talking about all the effects of doing it and why it's a good idea, etc. But um, actually doing it is another matter. It's quite difficult. Um, interior photography is one of the more technically demanding genres around. And uh, I have a, a book and a video series that both go through the basics of um, of how to do it and then advance from there into more advanced techniques. I really don't hold anything back. Everything I do is is in that book and, and in that video series. Oh my god. And they, very cool. it said photo uh, what's the website? Which one there's the uh, the for the video series? Yes, yes. That's lighting for real estate photography dot com. Very nice. So um, everybody please check that out. It's uh, I want to start doing this. Yeah. Very cool that you that you uh, provide all this information to everybody. Yes. Well, you know, I was helped out quite a bit. Um, it's, it's difficult to find these things out and uh, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm happy to do it. You tell That's the great. story so well, so thank you so much for being a part of our show today. And they can reach, uh, reach you and um, find all this good information at where? I, I'm sorry, I didn't get that. <laughs> Where Where is the best place to find uh, all this information and information about you? Oh, on my blog would be the best place to go. ScottHargisPhoto.com and then follow the link to the blog from there. Yeah, you can get sucked into that blog. It's really amazing. My blog uh, goes back a few years and I've put yeah. lots of stuff on it. So yeah, it's, it's, fun. it's a content rich area for sure. Well, thanks again for being yeah, our guest Yeah, it's been very today. nice to have yes. you and thank you very much. You're welcome. All right, bye-bye.
That was a wonderful show today. Um, such a great guest. We're so honored. Puts a whole other uh, view on photography. I know. Uh, until next week, have a great week. <laughs> I need to go. <laughs> <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.